Hey there, everybody. Um, so I'm going to try to keep this uh, video a little bit on the shorter side. We're looking at polynomial inequalities. And the reason I believe we can keep it uh, less than, pun intended, um, than our videos uh, of, uh, of more recent is because we've already talked about inequalities with quadratics. Okay? And now we're just talking about inequalities with any polynomial. And think back, how did we solve a quadratic inequality? If we wanted to know where something's greater than zero, we first find where it's equal to zero. We consider what the graph looks like and then identify where on the graph it's greater than zero. So let's start with this polynomial first. x cubed minus x is greater than zero. Let's first find where does this equal zero. Now I could think I, I think I can solve this one pretty quickly. Uh, instead of making my list of possible rational zeros and doing all of that, um, I'm going to factor out an x. By the way, I can't make my list of possible rational zeros without a constant there, so I have to factor it that x out anyway. And when I do that, I notice I end up with a difference of perfect squares, and we end up with this. We have zeros of 0, negative 1, or 1. Now, let's consider what the graph might look like. Well, when I look at this polynomial, what's my end behavior? It's odd, so they're going opposite directions. Its leading coefficient is positive, so that means it needs to go like this. It needs to start down here and finish up there. Our zeros are 0, 1, and negative 1. And if I sketch in what this would look like following my end behavior, it has to look something like that. So now I ask, where is this greater than zero? Okay. Well, that would be from here, not including negative one, exclusive, up to zero, and then from one exclusive over there. That's where it's greater than zero. So my solution would be negative one exclusive to zero, union one exclusive to infinity. That's where it's greater than zero. If it was less than zero, I'd go from there to there and then here. If I threw in the or equal to's, then I would maybe I'd have some brackets instead. Okay. All right, let's try a little bit bigger one. Fourth degree polynomial. Okay. Now, don't let this way I wrote this inequality goof you up. It says zero is less than or equal to x to the fourth and so on. Isn't that the same as saying where is this polynomial greater than or equal to zero, right? So don't let the order goof you up. The polynomial, we want to know where is that polynomial greater than or equal to zero. So on this one, I do have to make my list of possible rational zeros. And we're talking factors of 20 over factors of one. So one, two, four, five, 10 and 20. Um, taking a look at my sign changes, there's 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Am I counting that right? No, not 3, 2, right? No, positive. Okay, there's 1, 2, three sign changes, so three or one positive real zeros. Um, I am going to start off with a positive. Let's go one, negative four, negative one, 20, negative 20. I like to start mid-range here. I might start with like five. Let's try five here. One, five, one, five, four, 20, 40, whoa, 200, 180, whoa, 5 does not work, didn't even get close. Now, if 5 doesn't work, now take a look. Remember, that we're checking a 0 that's positive, and our leading coefficient is positive. Notice none of the bottom row is negative. That tells me 5 is an upper bound. So not only can I get rid of positive 5, but also positive 10 and positive 20. Ah. 
All right, let's try another one. Uh, let's maybe jump down to two. Aha, got one. Two is a zero, so that looks good. Now notice it's not an upper bound, okay? so we might have one bigger. Um, but I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to try this again. Let's see if two works again. And it does. Okay? Don't forget to look for repeated zeros. So where are we at right now? We have x minus 2 as a factor repeated twice. And what's left? Constant, excuse me, remainder, constant x, x squared. We have x squared minus 5. Okay. So what are our last two zeros? Well, where does x squared minus 5 equal 0? Well, that would be x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. So we have two repeated twice. And we have the square root of five and we have the negative square root of five. All right, looks good. So now remember, we're trying to figure out where is this greater than or equal to zero. So we need to consider what the graph looks like. Let me put my zeros on here. Uh, let's call this 2. Now the square root of 5 is just a little bit bigger than 2, isn't it? Right? So there's 3. We're going to call the square root of 5 right there. And the negative square root of 5 yeah, right about there. Now this is repeated twice at 2, so that means we're going to bounce. And our end behavior is our leading coefficient is positive and it's even. This is both going up. So I'm starting up here and finishing up here. So I know I need to come down, come up. Now remember at 2 we're bouncing, so it's going to hit, go back down, and then go back up through. So where is this greater than or equal to 0? Well, let me color it red. It's greater than or equal to zero on this whole stretch, including negative root five. It's equal to zero at two, and then it's equal to zero at the square root of five, and continued on. So my solution is negative infinity to negative root five, union two to two, union square root of five to infinity. There we go. So I, I hope that's enough for you guys. Basically, find your zeros, think about the end behavior, sketch a graph, and determine uh, what meets the inequality that you're looking for. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.